Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good morning to all my morning viewers. I'm going to give you an update on the golf storm and what's going on because we have this big, strong tut that is really messing things up and is also protecting as well for Florida. So I'm going to give you all the updates you need as well as what the possibilities are in the ensembles because I'm showing the rain is going to tighten up some for Mississippi. And you can see with the NAM 3K that it really can't get together at all. It tries so many times, it cannot get itself going. And then finally around Wednesday, it starts doing some tightening. So this will probably form over land, probably a tropical disturbance. If it does become a tropical depression, if you follow the names, tropical depressions don't get names. But either way this goes, whether it forms or not, it is bringing the heavy rainfall. And they are finding that the winds are going mostly east, northeast, and the most so far is about 12 miles per hour wind speed. That, that's about it. Everything else starts downgrading after that, and it goes from 12 down to 8 to 6. Really a lot of low wind speeds. 12 is the highest. You have a little bit of 10 on the east side of it, but that's it. 12 is really the highest of the wind speeds that we have so far with this system. And I know Texas, I know y'all really needed some of this rainfall. Y'all are in such hot temperatures right now. Matter of fact, all this red that you see on the map, even for the Northwest, you all in the red for a heat advisory. This means you have chances to get up to 105 to 109 degree temperatures for today. And everyone in the pink, you do have a chance to get 105, 110 degrees also for today. But now you're getting the chances for heat indexes up to 112 for today and over here in the southwest for arizona and southern california you have chances to get temperatures to 110 degrees to 114 degrees for today so you have a lot of hot temperatures going on not only for arizona california also for texas and you have the heat advisories over here for northern california and southern oregon and it's really not going to help with your temperatures because it's going to stay this way for quite some time you have a very much above average temperatures for the next six to 10 days. And when you go from the eight to 14 days, it pretty much stays there. So it's gonna be a lot of hot temperatures sticking around for quite some time. And you can see for the next six to 10 days on your precipitation that you still have some for your monsoon season, but you are gonna be well below average for any kind of precipitation in this brown also for the Northwest. So there is gonna be a lot of drought still going on for you guys. The National Weather Service did put out this rainfall total so far of what you can see with just within the next three to five days. And all this dark blue is all a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. All this light blue gets to where it's about an inch. All this pink to purple gets almost two inches. And then when you get to this red, you get anywhere from two to almost three inches of rainfall. And all this orange is anywhere from four to five inches right along the coast. And you do have a big area for slight risk for flash flooding for the next few days along the Gulf Coast. But like I said, I do see in the ensembles that all this rainfall totals is gonna start tightening up around Mississippi. And you can also see that Hurricane Darby is expected to become a major hurricane with winds up to 125 miles per hour, then start weakening back down to a two, a one, a tropical storm, a tropical depression. And it is headed towards Hawaii Islands a little bit. And I'll show you in both models of Euro and GFS that it starts dying off very quickly as it gets close to you. But right now, Hurricane Darby is at 105 miles per hour winds, 975 millibars, moving west at 16 miles per hour. And that disturbance one that's in the eastern Pacific has moved up to 60% chance, not much of a difference. And remember, all these links are in the description so you can go look at them as they update throughout the day as well. And you can see it's major hurricane all the way down to a tropical depression by Friday evening for Hawaii before it comes towards y'all. Probably some thunderstorms will be coming your way disorganized and that's about it. Cause you can see with the GFS that as it moves towards you, it starts weakening down greatly. It even lose its surface low, becomes an upper level low, goes back and forth, just bringing some possible rainfall to the Southern islands. That's about it. And the Ural shows about the same thing. It fights with itself to try and gain some kind of surface low, but it's just a group of disorganized thunderstorms as it moves by all, mostly for Saturday is what it shows. Euro and GFS. Sometime on Saturday, you're going to be getting this rainfall coming through, this disorganized thunderstorms, 
and that's about it. It's not even going to have a surface low by that time. And what's in the Atlantic Ocean? This has gone up a little bit. Last night, it went up from 20% to 30%. I really don't think it's going to get much formation. I think it would be a very weak tropical disturbance. And that's about it. And I know a lot of people are thinking, hey, it's the Gulf. It's very warm waters. It's in the 90s. But we have this tut right here that is really hindering this system from doing this formation. At the same time, it is protecting the eastern Gulf of Mexico over here by Florida. Now, when you look at your rainfall totals, you can see the next five days with the Euro. And when you go to the 10 days, you can see that next tropical wave does make its way a little northern. But it gets tore up by this tut that we have right here, and it really don't give any formation. It'll bring more rainfall, but not another system is the way it's looking. Even the NASA satellite shows it tries to form up late in the Gulf, right where we're about to get this disturbance now. But it gets all this dry air inside of it, and it just don't let it form up. GFS even shows that it has a chance to maybe move a little more western to get to edge of Texas, might get some rainfall. Please take that with a grain of salt because that's 10 days, 5 days. Neither model is showing any rainfall for you guys. But you can see on the GFS when you look at your geo potential height that you have all this chances for the system to form in the Gulf. But you also can see that next wave does come right over Puerto Rico, very weak if anything, as it carries across towards Bahamas, and then it finally does group right back up in the Gulf later on. So there is a chance for one and possibly two still for these chances for these low pressures to form in the Gulf. I'm showing that it is, is trying over and over and over. But you can see the update on the NASA satellite that it really cannot group itself together. It's just going to be a lot of precipitation. It might get down to maybe 1,010, 1,011 millibars. But the mean pressure over the ocean is 1,013, so it's not showing too much. At the same time, as this group of dust comes by and we get that chance for that next one to form up sometime in the teens, you can see that it does form up late and it tries to get some rotation in it but it gets a lot of this dry air inside of its center and it cannot really strengthen up to anything it does try later but if anything it might bring some more precipitation not a whole bunch the dry air is really killing the next opportunity around the 16th and this is your tut right here uh, tut is a tropical upper tropospheric trough and this trough is actually protecting the eastern side of the gulf of mexico protecting all from Florida. And you can see how you have your clouds coming down from the north to the south on the west side. You have it come from the south to the north on the east side. So here's your tut right here. And this is really hindering this system from trying to form up. And it's really shredding at it to where it can't do much formation. It has this little pocket to try and do something. That's about it. As this cold front comes down and it starts pulling all this precipitation over to the east southeast still so it tries so many times to form up but it really can't you have a stalled front right here and it's just keeping it right offshore so most of the rainfall will be in the gulf of mexico it's not going towards florida because you have this tut right here in the gulf Matter of fact, when you look all through the ensembles, you can see that in that yesterday's run, the 12Z is when it showed the most strength. It even showed a 90% chance of a tropical depression to form. And you can see right here in E2 that it does show that it does start strengthening up and go towards Louisiana, something kind of strong. But if you look at your controlled member just right over here to the side, you see the most likely outcome is that it will stay weak. It will not strengthen up like that as it comes on land towards Mississippi. That is the most unlikely outcome out of all these members. And you can see the members. They have many that say, oh, it'll go towards Florida. That is not possible with that tut in place, guys. Matter of fact, when you look at the update from this morning, you can see that it most likely will have a upper level low forming is what they're agreeing to now and not a strengthening of a system going a little bit towards Alabama, maybe the panhandle. That's about it. But when you look at the most likely outcome, you can see over here on the left that it's pretty much going to stay an upper level low. Something very weak. It is not going to form up anything strong. It is too busy trying to fight the atmosphere. Matter of fact, when you look for chances for a tropical depression now, because last night, Euro showed up to a 90% chance. 
But this tut went all the way from the Bahamas all the way over Florida, and that is really hindering this system. So as you go towards four days and five days, it's strongest by Thursday, by Friday, and now it's only showing a chance for maybe 50 to 55% chance of becoming just a tropical depression. Then it weakens down as it moves away. And you can see that other little wave does start to move its way across the Bahamas, but nothing is coming out of that. It's just too weak of a system to form up the second one neither. But as you look from the southeast, you can see within the next 72 hours, next three days, don't even worry about these rest of these members. The most likely outcome is right here. They're going to start adding up to two to three inches of rainfall for Louisiana and for Mississippi. And as you go to four days and five days, it starts to really add up for Mississippi mostly and a lot of it in the Gulf. Then the next piece of wave comes in. It gives a little bit more precipitation. Most of it goes into the Gulf. So you could get two to three inches also for Georgia, mostly going to be southwestern Alabama, center to southern Mississippi, also for southern Louisiana. This looks like it's going to be where the most of the rainfall is. Even though National Weather Service has this spread out, I'm showing that the most likely outcome that it will tighten up to a smaller area of heavy rainfall and then another smaller area over Georgia. Also, the most and likely outcome of what it's looking like with this system. So literally, it looks like it takes about 36 hours for it to get any kind of surface low out of that system. But you can see how it's just hit and miss. It's hard to stay together. Then once you go through Wednesday, it starts dissipating again. Can't hold that surface low for anything. and just sits there and brings all that precipitation on Mississippi. That's why it's showing Mississippi. And this is where you can see where it's getting messed with at the upper levels. So at your lower levels, at your cyclonic relative vorticity, according to the euro, you look at your 850 millibars, you can see how it tries to get together, travels over Mississippi, travels over Alabama, goes west to east, back and forth, bringing all that rainfall just in this one center of an area. So it just dances around for a while. And then it goes away, just cannot get together. And that's the most strength that it shows is mostly by Friday and Saturday. But you can see when you look a little bit higher at the 500 millibars that it really is fighting against itself. It cannot hold anything together very much at the 500 millibars. It's holding it a little bit better at the 850 millibars. This thing is not going to be able to hold itself together at all. It's getting elongated by this tut and it's really hard to hold a center. It will be a big rainfall event. So as you look with National Weather Service, just for the next three days, next 72 hours, you see how it starts adding up to one and two inches for Louisiana, a little bit of Southern Mississippi, Southern Alabama, and a little bit of the panhandle of Florida. And that's what you see here from National Weather Service at a little bit of rainfall for the next three days. But once you go five days, it's gonna keep adding up to this precipitation you go seven days a lot of the heaviness is in the gulf all this brown and yellow very much from anywhere from seven to all the way to 11 plus inches of rainfall is all in the gulf but you can see you are getting an orange which is anywhere from five to six inches of rainfall for southern louisiana southern alabama and mississippi and the panhandle of florida all this red you see is all two to three inches of rainfall. And all this purple is all one and a half to almost two inches of rainfall. Now this will be bringing some flash flooding. You still have it for your monsoon season for today, as well as the storms for the Great Lakes for today. But you can see in the south and southeast, you have marginal and slight risk as you go into tomorrow. It's going to stay in the south for a marginal as well as your monsoon season. And as you go through Wednesday, then it's going to be a slight risk right here for Louisiana for the heaviest amount, just like I showed you at National Weather Service. Then as you keep going for Thursday, it stays a nasty low slight risk just for southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama. And as you go through Friday, it stays again for southern Alabama and the Panhandle of Florida. And this is where it's just going to bring inches of rainfall very quick. So, of course, I have this zoomable link for all of you so you can zoom into your area the next five days according to GFS. 
shows the heaviness for Louisiana as well as for southern Mississippi. And Euro is kind of agreeing now. It's not going western. It's agreeing with the GFS that this is all getting pulled to the east, southeast. It takes it more into Alabama. Now, the next 10 days, when that other piece of that wave comes up with some more thunderstorms, bringing y'all some more rainfall, it starts adding up even more according to the Euro. But the GFS takes that further to the west, where some of it could go into Texas, but most of it is showing for Louisiana. But both of them are green just within the next three days that it will be mostly for Louisiana and maybe a little bit of southern Mississippi that's going to see any rainfall. That's within the next three days. All this is happening after three days. And the winds as well. It just looks like maybe 20 to very low, if possible, 30 miles per hour wind gusts, mostly in the 20s. No serious winds. So that is the update. I just want to let you know what was going on with this system in the Gulf. I've seen a few people try and tell people that this is going to turn into a hurricane and be something very monstrous. And that's not true. If it wasn't for that tut, then it'd have a very great chance. But these tuts really create problems and they do form up during these summer storm so god bless all of you hope you have a very blessed day today i have it on the whole country on high resolution rapid refresh for the next 48 hours i know y'all do have some storms coming we didn't have any tornadoes last night and that was the best chance for the week but y'all do have some storms coming for the next couple of days isaiah four and in that day seven women shall take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge, and for a covert from storm and from rain. Amen. Hope you have a very blessed week this week. Start off very positive, <laughs> very uplifting. It is Monday. Tell yourself you're going to have a great day, you're going to have a great week, and you will. I know you all will. Just a peaceful, beautiful day. And all glory. All honor does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a very great day, everybody.